homestead now. Today is my boys, Shandon's Thanksgiving. So we're gonna be doing a fast and easy Thanksgiving. First off, I'm gonna start off on um, some dip. And we're just doing what we have on hand at home. So I have avocados and sour cream. And I'm gonna make my mom's uh, avocado dip that she would always do. My Aunt Sandy made this too a lot. But um, so all you do is you take your avocados and then um, we need some garlic salt. Here's some garlic salt. And you need a hot sauce. Normally, what's best is the green La Victoria green sauce, the green taco sauce. But all I have is this sauce. So we're gonna use this. But if you're gonna go out and buy the ingredients, get the green La Victoria taco sauce to go in it. That's what, what works best. And then we're gonna, um, before I get my fork dirty, I'm just gonna put a bit of sour cream on the side. So like, I have uh, two avocados right here. So I'm gonna do a couple dollops, big giant dollops of sour cream. Okay, just a couple dollops of sour cream. And then, um, I'm gonna add my garlic salt here, just to taste. I kinda know what the flavor I'm looking for, so about a half a teaspoon. And then um, add your hot sauce. I wish I had the Green Law Victoria sauce, but I don't, and I'm not going to the store for anything. This is a easy, fast Thanksgiving stuff, you know? So, I just smash it up with your fork. Smash, 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 smash. And you just stir it all in. And this is my mama's oaky guacamole <laughs> avocado dip. This is, a, this is the only way I've ever knew what avocados were for. I never even had avocados in any other way besides this until I got older. And I would only buy it for this. I had no other, I didn't know any other way to make avocados. <laughs> but now I do. Because my mom and my aunt love to make this just for, to, for snacks. All right, and then you taste it. Use a little bit more hot sauce. You can put salt in it. You can do whatever. But I'm saying that La Victoria, the green or any green taco sauce probably would be the best. Now because this was gonna, it will turn brown on you. If you're not gonna eat it right away, we're gonna add a little bit of lemon juice to keep it from turning brown. But my mom never did that because we just ate it so fast. So now we're on to my additions to this. So we're going to add, um, because I have tomatoes that need to be eaten, we're going to have some, just add some tomatoes to it. This is extra stuff here. Add the tomato. If I add any um, jalapeno, I'd add that. Anything you want, bell peppers, you add whatever you want. Just I'm trying to clear the fridge out here. So I had these in the fridge. Add some lemon juice so it doesn't turn brown on us. Just a little bit. We don't want it to take away from the flavor. You can also put, um, some people put like, uh, like a salad dressing. I don't know, I've had a place that did salad dressing um, for uh, preservative, like Italian salad dressing, I, for it to preserve avocado. But so you either use an oil or acid to keep avocados from turning brown. So you do lemon or lime juice. Let me taste it. Mmm, it's pretty good. All right, that's good. That's how you make it. 
And we're gonna put it in a fancy serving dish because my son needs everything fancy. We're gonna do that, and then I'm gonna go get all my canned stuff, and we're gonna make it easy Thanksgiving with all the canned stuff, so I can do it fast. So I'll go get that. Alrighty, so I got everything out and ready to go, and this is the fancy avocado and the bowl, the glass bowl I had to put in. So we'll put that at the table, and we got ourselves a ham from the freezer. Now this is just stuff I have on hand and I'm just going to make it quick and easy for my May Thanksgiving. <laughs> I have a roaster on the counter and my oven's broke, but the roaster is perfect. So I'll put this in the roaster with a little bit of water and just cover it with brown sugar and it's good to go when it's done. That's all I do. I don't like to season it too much. so. You put whatever you want on it, and we're gonna just slide this in real fast. It's, I got a sharp knife, I think. <laughs> we're just gonna slide our ham from our freezer. I always buy hams when they go on sale, just to keep, because I like to eat ham year round, you know? So, this is perfect time, that way we can have leftover sandwiches. There we go. Put it in the roaster and then I'll just top it off with some brown sugar. All right, so I'm gonna bring you in for a little closer look here. We are all just using all of our canned goods and clear out our, our cupboards today, hopefully. So, first off, I have two jars of canned yellow taters. Now, these are 2019, they need to be used up. So, what I'm gonna do with these is I'm gonna fry them off in a pan the frying pan with a little bit of um, olive oil and uh, some, um, yeah, just a little bit of olive oil. And then we're going to put them in a baking dish and bake them up. Crisp them up in a baking dish with a little bit of uh, butter. And then we will be making, I have canned duck from a duck harvest in 2019 that needs to be used. Canned bone in and all. We're gonna make duck gravy to go on top of those fried up uh, fried up taters. Now normally I make mashed taters for my holidays, but I don't wanna be mashing. I just wanna make it fast. So next, after we fry those off and put those in the oven, we're gonna have a stuffing. This is just all I had in my cupboard. I had a box of stuffing. I don't follow the directions. I just add some onion some celery if I have it. Um, I put whatever broth I'm cooking, either turkey, ham, or chicken, whatever broth I have going on, I'll add to it. So, and I try to not use much of the seasoning in here. I get it out with my hands, because um, it's just too much seasoning. But, and then I just add an egg and hot water. And that's how I make that. And then after that, we're gonna be doing our um, French onion green bean casserole. So we got canned green beans and some cream of chicken I made. We're gonna do that and then I have canned milk for when I need it. And we got our canned corn and that is just gonna be our holiday meal. I don't have lettuce for a salad or I do that. All right, so let's get going frying off our taters. Okay, so we got our skillet over here on the stove and we're gonna turn the burner on. And it's just like your regular tater hash we're doing. Um, but we're just doing a quick cook off just to get them nice and a little bit fried up before we put them into the baking dish. Okie dokie, so we have our hot pan ready to add our oil. Let's add some oil. Remember, we don't want to make the oil too hot. Just And we're going to add the oil just enough to cover the bottom of the pan. Okay. Let that heat up real fast. And our taters are drained off. I opened them. They had a good seal. I should have showed you that opening. Sorry. <laughs> They're drained off. And um, we'll add these. And... 
the point of doing this is to cook off some of the water in here that's in here and uh, just to get them a little crispy before we start baking them in the oven here. Okay, you don't want your oil too hot because if your oil's too hot, then it's going to start popping all over the place. Turn my burner off. Oh, and I forgot to say that these are canned. I don't can my taters with water. I can them with broth. Mm, so these are canned with chicken broth. We're just going to cook those down a bit and let those cook. All right, so we're going to let this heat up and cook down. And that's, we're just going to uh, periodically uh, turn that here and there. And while that's cooking, we're going to focus on making the other stuff. So it's going to take probably about a good 15 minutes of it sitting like that. So while that's going on, we're going to get our other stuff ready to rock and roll. Okay, so we got our we got our green beans here and we're gonna start on our green bean casserole. That was a good seal. These are from 2018, these beans. And I'm gonna I'm over here pouring the juice off. Mm. <clears throat> and this is <clears throat> green beans and chicken broth. So I really don't want to pour the juice off actually. So we got green beans and chicken broth in here. Mmm, these are French cut. That's good stuff. And we're gonna set this aside, rinse it out a little bit. We don't want to waste any of that good good stuff there. Alright. Let's get this. This is the cream of chicken I have. That was a great seal. 2019. November 2019. My cream of chicken. So, got my cream of chicken in here. And then I'll probably um, add a couple more uh, jars of green beans. I think I need more jars. Uh, green beans. Here. I still forget what this is called. <laughs> and I'm not looking it up. I'm being stubborn. I want to figure it out for myself. I know I know what it's called. Alright, so. I found my good one, though. That's not bent. Alright. I'm going to rinse this out with a little bit of water. I'm going to get a couple more uh, jars of green beans and add it to it real fast. Alright, so I grabbed... Couple, I already opened it. A couple more green beans here, and these are just regular cut. And then um, add those in and start folding your cream. And then uh, cream of chicken. I also have a thing, a cream of mushroom I made. So we're going to add my cream of mushroom out of the jar. That I made this is my last jar of cream of mushroom. And then but if you didn't have cream of mushroom, um, if you have canned mushrooms, that'll go in the really good with cream of chicken. And I have canned mushrooms. I might just add some because I think that'll taste real good. Let's, I'll get some canned mushrooms and add that. Let's stir this up real nice here. We don't need to add any more liquid because um, our green beans were canned in chicken broth. So I have my homemade mayonnaise here and we're going to add just a dollop and the mayonnaise always just gives it a little good flavor so we're going to just add a little bit of my homemade mayonnaise to it and I have a video on how to make that 
All right, so let's mix that mayonnaise in. Okay, and let's add pepper. Pepper, pepper, pepper. I just do enough to coat the top. So we're gonna coat the top. So I roll with anything. I just coat the tops and then stir. And then just a little salt. We don't want too much. The pepper's gonna make me sneeze. Ah, oh, bless me. All right, now let's stir that in real well. Now I have a jar of mushrooms. I jarred um, on 11, 19, and it was with the reused lid. So that's held real well. I'm in my 2019 stock trying to get rid of that so I can can up some more stuff. And that was a good seal. Mm, smells really good. Smells like mushrooms. We're going to drain the liquid. Even though that liquid's probably super delicious for you. I should have just added it. Alright, so we're going to sprinkle the top with my canned mushrooms. These are store-bought organic. And I chopped them up and canned them. You have to blanch mushrooms before you can them. All right, just a little here and there. Okay, and there's only one more step, and that is to add your French onion right here. And um, I just. I have almost everything you need in the world laying around here <laughs> to make a meal. I have, also I have caramelized onions I canned, but I don't want to add that. I don't want to make it too rich. So we'll put this on. A nice layer here. But you could, if you had caramelized onions, do you do that? I was going to make an a onion dip with my caramelized onion, which is delicious, but I don't have cream cheese. You need cream cheese. And I use the cream cheese for my icing for my pumpkin bread. Alright, this is uh, my kid's favorite, or my son's, my youngest son's favorite part. My daughter likes it too. My oldest son, he was a meat and bread and taters kid. He, so, all right, and then we're just going to cover this up and put it in the toaster oven while we cook everything else. Put some foil on top and then put it in the toaster oven for about 30 minutes, 35 minutes. Until, it's just to heat it all the way through until it's really hot. Because you're really not cooking anything, you're just heating it up. So, all right. So we got that taken care of. That's one dish. Got one dish going on. And by the time these taters are done, and this uh, green beans should be ready to be taken out. We're still got these taters going over here. All right, get this going. Let's cook that up, and now we have, let's do, get our dressing ready. So I'm gonna use the ham broth in this dressing, I think. You know what? No, let's not do that. Let's just get a can of broth. Okay, so I got my chicken broth here. A little dusty on top. That is, I can't tell the date on that one. This is chicken broth 2019. September 2019. All right, so we don't have to wait for the ham to get done to use a ham broth. So I'm gonna cut this onion real fast, and we don't need much of it. We're just gonna do get the outside off. So 
this onion, the bottom part of it is going bad, so we'll just cut that part off. I use stuff like that, just cut that off, and there you go, got a good onion. All right, let's cut the onion real fast. Get that part out of here. All right, we're gonna cut up an onion. Real fast like Ninja, hopefully. I totally chopped it up wrong. All right. I didn't chop it right. <laughs> That's okay. It's okay. Okie dokie. So if you have celery, which I love to add celery, but I don't think I have any. I use it all when I canned. So add celery because that's good stuff. I'm gonna put it in this pot right here and we're gonna just cook it a bit just to get the rawness out. And if you have celery, do that. If you wanna add carrots, do that. But you wanna add, you wanna cook it off a bit get it softened up and ready to go. If you have canned onions, go ahead and use that. I do have canned onions, but this fresh one needed to be cut. All right. So let's bring you back to the stove and we'll go check up on those taters while we cook, cook off those onions. All right, we got our taters cooking off over here. And Let's move this pan and so we can, I have not touched the taters. I haven't stirred them since we put them in. They've just been sitting there cooking like that. So we're going to put our onion over here real fast on this burner. And then add a little bit of um, olive oil or butter, whatever you want to help uh, soften them up before we put them in our stuffing. Add a little bit of this is just cooking oil. This is what I use to cook with the I cook the processed olive oil, the refined one. So I cook with that a lot. Or lard. Got gotta have your lard. Alright, we're gonna just let those saute a little bit. Now let's get to our taters here. I'm gonna need this metal spatula here. All right, so these potatoes have been sitting here cooking. I haven't stirred them yet. You get a wire uh, metal spatula or a wooden one, but the metal one works best for turning. So we're just gonna turn them. And my taters are brown from the canning process, but also um, mainly from the chicken broth that canned them in. Alright, so we just flipped them all over and we're going to let it cook on this side now, just for a little bit. I can tell the liquid's pretty much almost drained out and that's what I wanted or dissipated. The liquid is pretty much dissipated and that's what I wanted. So let it cook just a little bit longer and then we can put them in the pan. And our onions are done. We don't want to caramelize them so much. We don't want to caramelize them. We just want to get them clear. Clear enough. And we add it to our stuffing. And the onions are done now, too. Just they're just softened and clear looking. Okay. So I think the taters are um about done, and we can go ahead while we have the camera over here. Go ahead and start ladling the taters. 
spatuling, spatuling the taters in his pan here. Dropped one to the stove. The stove stole a tater. All right, let's turn the heat off of this. Don't need that on anymore. Okay, we're gonna set this aside here and then we're gonna make a duck gravy to go on top and then we're gonna put it in the toaster oven when the green beans are done. Okay, I got my sauteed onions we're gonna put in this pan right over here for the stuffing. All right, so we have an egg here, okay? We're gonna add the egg in. So we got our egg in on our onion, and I like to do it this way, that way I'm not dirtying another bowl. So I add the chicken broth. Let's add a pint of chicken broth or a can if you're using real canned goods from the store. Now remember, this. Um, usually I have celery in here. Some people add carrots too, but don't have that. So you're going to whisk your egg in nice and good in the broth. And then we're going to add our stuffing mix. Now I try to leave most of the seasoning in the bottom of the bag. So I'll just like just start grabbing it with my hand to funnel it out. I don't like all that seasoning in here. It's just too much. So let me bring this over here closer so you can see. There. Try to get the big pieces out of these crumbs. Yeah, I'm just going to leave the rest in there. I don't like to use that. All right. That's the only box item I have. I don't have any uh, bread. I don't need that. We'll use a spoon. Tap it down in here. All right. Usually I will, my pan's really a lot bigger than this because I have more people to feed, but it's just us who are going to do that. All right, and then we'll get foil and cover that up and get that ready to put in. So this bakes for about a half hour in the toaster oven. So once I get the green bean casserole out, we'll put this in for 30 minutes. Okay, so now we need this pan. And this is what we're gonna make our duck gravy out of. And we have my canned duck and it has good fat in it with the bone. And we're gonna have to go through bone. But the best thing about canning with bones is that let's this is 2000 September 2019 that was a great seal September 2019 my daughter helped me process this one <laughs> anyways um the best thing about canning with bones is that the bones you can feed them to your animals because it turns to bone meal, they just, they smash. So, we're gonna go ahead and separate the meat off the bone. So if you have little little bits of bone, um, you don't have to worry about those tiny, tiny bones because um, 
they were dissolved. You, it turns into bone meal, which is very healthy for you. So you get to have bones. <laughs> you get to have that nutrition from the bones. Okay, I think we got all the bones out. We got nice, juicy fat coming out. Oh, here's a neck bone. Hold on. We got a neck bone here. Yeah, the neck bone. Just, I'm gently peeling off. Just trying to make sure we don't have any hard pieces. But we don't. And just get little pieces of meat off that neck. So, you know, certain breeds of duck don't have as much meat and um, this is a mallard so um, I like to can them all, bone and all to get all the fat and flavor I can because if you, you don't can a mallard basically it's just breast and leg meat that's it but you can it you can use, utilize a lot more than the breast and leg only you can do the wings too all right let's make sure we get that Okay, I've got one more bone in here. I think it's just I got a little spine bone, a little leg bone here. Run my fingers through it all. Yeah, this I can't. This one it was canned with a lot of bone. Alright, so we got the duck in here and it has a lot of nice fat and we're going to start the gravy. Now we're going to add about a half a cup of flour here. Let's add a half a cup of flour to your fat. Uh, maybe a little more than a half a cup. Just a little more than a half a cup. And we're going to add it to the fat. And we're going to stir it in. There, I'm going to cook it because I want to get rid of that raw flour taste. So, now, <laughs> let's turn this on and cook. I'm going to move this skillet now that it's cooled down. Out of my way. Okay, we got our flour in here cooking off and the duck oil. It looks kind of pasty, but I'm telling you, believe me, it's good. All right, let's add our milk. All right, add our milk here. We're doing like a, a cream gravy. Yeah, you know, like a biscuit and gravy, except we're not using sausage or bacon grease, we're using duck fat. So it's a really good gravy to go over these taters. And then of course, we got some water on standby right here to add as it starts thickening. We're going to put some salt in, a little bit of salt. My family's watching football in the background, so that you're going to hear some talking. Because this is Thanksgiving, right? We have to have football on. This is last year's football game. We're replaying. Mm. Tastes good. Need a little more. Salt here, some pepper. They won't let play. I think one eighteen year old played two years ago. 
So we're doing this because we don't have a turkey either. So we just got ham and I was like, duck gravy will be great on top of taters since we have no turkey. I have one in the freezer because I always have turkey in the freezer, but I'm saving that one. I don't want to cook it just for us. So, all right, so that's done. We got the gravy all nice and cooked up and flavored. Mm. Delicious. Um, let's go ahead and we're going to salt these taters a bit. Put a little bit of salt on these taters before we add um, the gravy over the top. And then we're going to put a little bit of olive oil. Just a little bit of... Uh, you know what? I'm not going to do olive oil. I want to do a little bit of butter. Okay, we're going to add a little bit of butter. And we'll just do slices of butter on top of there real fast. Since it already has olive oil on it. Alright, so we got some butter. We're going to put little slices of butter. 35, not many. Slices of butter everywhere. A couple of slices here and there. Let's do one more. All right. Okay, so we got the butter on. Now we're going to just add the gravy. Slowly add that gravy on. So anyways, you put foil on the top and we're going to just, it's already all cooked thoroughly. We're going to put this in the oven for about 30 minutes or less even um, when everything else is done. So maybe between 20 and 30 minutes we'll put this in the oven just to absorb all the flavors. All right, I do have coleslaw. I knew I had cabbage, I mean. I'm gonna make some coleslaw. All right, so for our coleslaw dressing, we're just gonna add real fast my homemade mayonnaise. We're gonna do a, a couple dollops of that. Just throw it on in there. We'll do three dollops of mayonnaise. Okay, and we're going to do probably a half a, if you were to measure, probably a half a cup of red wine vinegar, but I don't measure. I just put enough to cover the top of the mayonnaise. <laughs> That's my measuring. So, then we're just going to add some sugar. We're going to add sugar. Um, probably about three tablespoons of sugar, but it's really to taste. So start off with about two tablespoons and then add a tablespoon at a time. But I just shake it and we're just going to stir it up here. Got a nice little slurry going. Some people put salt in. I don't do salt. I think it's gross with salt. Mm, perfect. Now, just chop up your coleslaw, your coleslaw, <laughs> your cabbage here for your coleslaw. And then I add it, add it in your mixture you just did. And it's best if you prepare it the night before, or at least a couple hours before. So it has time to soak up all those, your dressing you made. So this is just a basic dressing here. 
and it's really good. Just stir your dressing in, put that in there. I do have carrots, but I don't want to add it in here because I don't like, I really don't like carrots in my coleslaw. I just don't like it. I like a plain, just cabbage and dressing. That's what I like. So, but sometimes you buy the already mixed and they'll have carrots in it. But I don't like to buy the already mixed stuff because it has um, like a powder coating on it, something to make it last long and it's not all that good for you. All right, so the last thing to do is just to cook the corn off and we're gonna just cook it in some butter. Add a good seal, we're gonna put it in here and I put my corn with a little hot pepper. I like to put hot peppers in my corn. So, and I'm just gonna put a little bit of butter in it and then put it on the stove. And I don't like to salt or pepper my corn and let anybody who wants to do that on their own. So that's easy, just heat that up. So we're got everything done, that is it. And the green beans about to be finished now so that's done and then i got all these lids a couple of them i might be able to read so look at all these jars we got one two three four five six seven eight nine we use nine jars i believe and these are ready to be filled after I wash them up with new stuff. All right, so let's get those green beans out. And then we'll put our stuffing in. So we'll just take this out and this is ready. Let's add our stuffing in. And I don't know how long this is taking me. Maybe, I know it's less than two hours. So, there's the green beans, that's done. And then 30 minutes for that stuffing. And then we'll take that out, we'll put the taters in. And then by that time, the ham should be ready to eat and be ready to have our little Thanksgiving. And I'm just gonna toast some toast if anybody wants bread. I would make some homemade biscuits, but I think with the gravy, it's just a little too much. So that's why I decided against that. All right, I'll come back to you when everything's done. Okay, y'all, the table is set and we're all ready to eat and I'll give you a gander at, at the finished product. All right, so we got our corn, our olives, our coleslaw, Oh, here's our stuffing. Here's the green bean casserole. Let's open this one. Ooh. Here's the taters and gravy. And here's the ham. And here's the cake I made the other day, or the bread, the pumpkin bread. Of course, our dip was on the side. I'm going to have to put that in the fridge. But I'll give you a whole look at the table of all the food that we have to eat. And it's just us three. This is Shandon's Thanksgiving because he was sick last Thanksgiving. And so we're redoing it just for him. Look at all this beautiful food. If we had other people, we'd probably have carrots and other stuff I would have. Because I have canned carrots and I have canned uh, sweet taters. We would have had that. But nobody here likes that except for me and I'm not going to eat it all. So that's why I didn't put any of those sweet taters and no carrots. But yeah. There's the finished product. It all looks super delicious. Okie dokie, y'all. So that's my quick Thanksgiving using all of my canned goods. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.